We have an incredible 8-bay M.2 SSD NAS by Terramaster. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. So we have a fun one today, especially with this 8-bay M.2 SSD NAS sitting right here. But before I get into that, I just want to kind of take a step back. So about a month or two ago, I did a video on this, and this is going to be the Terramaster, this one's sitting over here, the Terramaster D8 Hybrid. Um, let me just see, enclosure, I guess that's what they call it. And this thing was really cool, and now it's a DAS, a DAS. That means there's a 10 gigabit per second, basically USB-C cable that plugs into my Mac or your PC and you get that throughput, but this can hold up to four, uh, three and a half, you know, spinning drives or, you know, four, two and a half SSDs in the front. And then also on the side over here, it could do four more M.2 drives. You could raid the, you know, a couple of them with hardware raid, but the rest I did with the Mac built-in raid. So overall, I think this can hold up to like 128 terabytes of storage, but it was kind of a, you know, more of a dumb storage, right? It's like connecting a, a kind of an external hard drive to your system over here. It wasn't a NAS, it was a DAS, D-A-S. Okay, so what do I have today? I actually have something quite different than the one over here. This is actually called the F8 SSD Plus NAS, and it's sitting right here. They call it the F8 because it can hold eight, up to eight terabytes, eight M.2 NVMe drives times eight terabytes, or up to 64 terabytes of space total on this thing. It's pretty incredible. And it's a NAS, which is network attached storage. It's different than a DAS over here, which is direct attached storage. We'll get into that in a second. So in theory, this connects via a 10 gigabit per second ethernet cable, basically. And this works as a mini, mini server. That's why it's a lot different here. So this actually comes with an i3 eight core CPU on it. It also comes with 16 gigs of memory and it's expandable up to 32 gigabytes of memory on it as well. So in, in theory, it kind of acts like a little mini server. So if you've had experience setting up NASes, this is more of kind of a more experienced user, a little bit more. You don't have to be perfect, but a little bit of networking and business owners and stuff like that. This is incredible for that. And I'm gonna get into all the features. It's got a brand new software called TOS, or it's updated software. It's called TOS 6, and it does a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch of backup features built into it. You can run like Dockers and stuff. We'll talk about this. Over here, this is just more of a simple device where you can just plug and play, basically. So I just wanted to kind of set this up, that this is a little bit more complicated, but overall, most people can figure it out and they have great support at Terramaster. They'll actually, you can actually text them in real time for any of your questions. Okay, so I'll show you the box right now of this. Now it comes with a couple cool features. It comes obviously with the power cable, I'll show you that, and the power cord. It comes with an ethernet cable, which they come, you know, that's nice, they, they give you one in the box as well. Um, now it comes with a screwdriver, but you don't need it. I'll explain that in a second, because it's actually toolless. You can get into this thing very easily. And then it also comes with these, I'll show you a little picture of it, but it comes with the, a whole bunch of heat sinks for the eight SSDs, if you actually can attach those to the SSDs to keep them cool once they're in here. So it does come with all the heat sinks and stuff like that as well, which I thought was a really cool feature. Okay, so you can see how small this thing is in my hand over here. Look at this thing. So it's way smaller than this, and this holds eight M.2 SSDs. On the front of it, it actually has a grate where the air flows through, and it's got a power button on it, which is, you know, obviously you turn it on over there. And on the back, it's got two fans here that basically run like at 15 decibels when it's in idle. I mean, it's, you cannot hear it, trust me. You can barely hear it. Even when you're like up at load and stuff like that, it might get up to like the 30 decibels. So it's a very quiet device, and I have to say that, it's you know, they, the way that they've designed it's pretty good. It's got rubber feet on the bottom, and you actually sit it up this way, that's the way they want you to actually have it on your desk, like that, and the rubber feet actually help it from making any noise whatsoever. So just a really quiet device overall for all people are wondering about. And when I said it's toolless, I'll show you some pictures, but there's a little screw in the front over here. You can basically unscrew this, and then this thing just basically slides in and out of the case really easily, and you can get access to all eight of the SSD slots. So I'll show you the front of it. So on the front of it, once you slide all this out, you can see the unit here. You can put in four SSDs in the front there, and then it actually, if you turn it around, well actually, uh, I believe it has the RAM on there as well, and then you can turn it around and you can put four on the other side as well. So you can get eight total in here, you know, four on each side, and then you basically have to, I didn't, in my picture here, I don't have the, the little um, heat sinks on them, but you put the heat sink on there, and then you can go ahead and install all of the drives in there just fine, or you can put drives in that already have heat sinks on them. One of mine does already, so you get the idea there, but this is toolless, slides in and out, takes two seconds to do that, really cool design on it with just like one little screw in the front. Okay, let's talk about the ports now. So on the front of it, it has a reset button down here. Then it's got your power, you know, your power, I guess, input there. Then you have an HDMI uh, port here. Now that's really for diagnostic work and stuff, so I don't really use that that much. You know, you wanna you do some uh, you know, troubleshooting and stuff. That's more what that's for. But then you have a 10 gigabit ethernet port here. You can see it there. 
and then that's gonna be your main connection for data. And then up here you have two USB A's that are 10 gigabit per second and one USB C. Now, a lot of people, now one of the, the few complaints of this device is it does only have one 10 gigabit uh, ethernet port right there in the middle. But people had you know, commented in the comments that if you want to, you, you, with these 10 gigabit uh, um, you know, USB A and C ports, you can go ahead and maybe add another, you know the dongles that have additional um, you know, ethernet ports, you can go ahead and add those up here. So you can do that or you can connect a whole bunch of other devices up here, including you can actually connect this. If you bought this device over here, which is crazy, see it sitting right here? You can connect this into here via these ports here and add like 128 gigs of storage as well to this. That's kind of a cool feature built in as well. But overall, that's what these are for. It's your main connection here is the 10 gigabit ethernet port. Keep in mind that that's obviously gonna you know tap out at around a thousand megabytes per second. I was getting close to that for sure in my tests. You can see other people are getting around that, you know, depends on the SSDs, the type of RAID you set up and all that kind of stuff. So while this has eight SSDs, you know, depending on how you rate them, it's not really worth it to try to get more speed because you're only gonna get up to that 10 gigabit per second is really equates if you divide it by eight and all that stuff. You know, you're gonna be around a thousand, a little bit higher maybe, 1200, thousand, somewhere in that range, megabytes per second. And that's what you can get out of this. All right, let's get into pricing now, and then we're gonna get into what this thing can do in the software, because that's what you wanna stay tuned for. So if you look over here, right now it's on Amazon for 799 bucks. This is the more expensive version. They have a $100 coupon right now, so it's only 699. I guess they have it, they have one in the box as well, but on Amazon you can get $100 off, so this is really 699. This is the one with the i3 and then the 16 gigs. If you wanna get a lesser version, the only difference here, this is 599 on Amazon with the $100 coupon, so this would only be 499. This is gonna be not the plus version, this is the normal version. Now this has a, what does it have? It has a different CPU. Um, I don't know where it is. It's got eight gigs of RAM. Oh, it's got the N95 instead of the i3 and then half the RAM. So you can go with this one if you want. But the one I have sitting right here is the one that's 799, actually 699 right now. And it's subject to change, obviously, with that $100 coupon right now. But if you want to pick one up, you can get it definitely for 699 right now. Well, a lot of people might say, well, why would I spend $799, $699 on sale when I just need some basic backup? Well, if that's the case, you want something like this if you need a lot of it or just an external drive. But if you're somebody that you know, needs a NAS and you do a lot of other stuff, this is perfect because this works more of like a, like a server almost. You can do a whole bunch of stuff with this. I mean, you got to understand the differences here. This has got the power built into it. Plus, it's also got the TOS 6 software that has a ton of functionality, which we're going to talk about in a second. So this can do things like really install Docker servers on this, which is really cool. You can run that if you're a business or an individual. You can do things like run a Plusk media server. It's going to have the power to run all of your media perfectly on this because of that CPU and RAM. You can do things like the iSCSI storage buckets on here as well. That's going to be one thing you can do. You can even do like 312 storage backups built into this for businesses that need 312 to prevent ransomware attacks and stuff like that in the future, which is key to businesses. You can also offload your stuff to cloud stuff like Plesk, not Plesk, but like uh, Amazon, for instance, or Dropbox. This integrates with that, with the software that they have built into it and the software side of it. So this is more of a professional device. 64, again, 64 terabytes of that huge, fast M.2 stuff, and it's super quiet. So this is what you're paying for in this, and it's totally, I think, worth it for the right user. All right, so now I actually have the F8 SSD Plus set up on my computer here. It's actually running right now, and I've loaded the TOS 6, the brand new software that they actually have for this new version. If you take a look over here, here's my screen here. You can see this is the interface for it. It's actually really updated from the last series of TOS software from before. So take a look over here. So some cool things are, there's some icons at the top, which I'll get into in a second. There's a whole bunch of icons over here on the right. One cool thing off the bat is if you just mouse over things, it's gonna tell you what they are. For instance, Here's a dashboard right here, and actually it takes a couple seconds to load in, I'll show it to you. But you can go ahead and take a look in here. It's gonna have a whole bunch of information in here about the model, how much the uptime is. You can go ahead and see your network IO. You can go ahead and see your volume that's left. You can see your device, the temperature, 35C, you know, CPU temperature, disk temperature, and the fan right now, you can see it's not even running at zero RPM. So this will start running eventually when you actually ramp up. But right now it's obviously got no sound. Even when it runs, you can barely, barely feel it. It's super quiet, like I mentioned before. So that's kind of a cool interface there. Just kind of a whole bunch of widgets you can add and you know take away as you need them. But up here is kind of where the meat and potatoes happen. So at the very top up here, you do have a file manager. Take a look at this. So this is like a Windows style file manager. So I actually had set up a couple folders in here. Here's a test folder. So you can just you know drill right in. You can go ahead and right click on things and it acts almost like Windows. So it's really easy to move files around. This is where you would store all your files in here. You can set up all of your different you know folders and, and directories and stuff in here. It gives you your volume here as far as what's going on. So you get the idea. This is really, really an easy interface intuitive to use uh, just for managing all of your data 
that you drag into the device over here. So that's really cool that's built into that. Um, beyond that, let me just kind of go over here. So we have settings over here. Now, let me actually open this up a little bit better here for you. Actually down here, I'm sorry. Let me see if I can grab that. So here we go. So it has a whole bunch of different settings in here. It's got like user, user groups, you know, obviously all, all this stuff. I mean, you have a remote folder. I don't want to go through all of this, but I just want to go through some of the stuff that you can you could actually do in here in a second. So network services, it's obviously get you can set up your network, um, terminal and SN, SNMP services, discovery services, remote access, you can remote it and stuff like that. But down here is really kind of what I wanted to show you, the storage manager. So in here, you can click on the storage manager and you can see your volume in here. So when you initially set this up, let me actually click on this. I have two disks in there right now. It's going to give you the pool size and all that stuff in here. The storage pool you can set up here. Now with my two drives, this actually sets it up in something called T-RAID initially. And you can change this if you want. This is going to work in standard like RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 10. But it also does T-RAID, which is right here. You can see it right there. And so I put in two different drives of different sizes. So I can put in different types of drives, M.2s, different sizes. And T-RAID can braid them together using its algorithm. And it makes so you can kind of mix and match drives, which is a really nice feature but if you don't want that you can just do standard raid 1 raid you know raid 10 raid 5 stuff like that this acts like a raid 5 um, but you can see the storage pool. I have an or Oracle drive and I have another drive. I'm not even sure where that one's from, but these two are two completely different drives, two different sizes and T-RAID will actually do that for you. Um, you can see in here, it's got all, all the interfaces that you need in here. Um, virtual disk in here. I have You can mount virtual disks in here. USB device, no mounted USB storage device. So you can mount, like I said, the other device, which is a USB storage device, onto this thing. It should show up here as well. You can set up hot spares in here as well in here. So all these different things. It just does a whole bunch of different things, right? I just want to kind of explain how how, you know, how feature-rich this whole, this whole interface has gotten. Um, you know, it's got resource monitors in here. You can see it's going to give you all the information about everything in your network here as far as your resources. It's going to give you all this information here as well. Again, this is kind of like the sidebar, but it's going to give you a little bit more information. Your load here, your memory usage, your fan speed. Now it's running at, what, 1100 or 1200 RPM. I cannot hear it. Gives you all of the you know network upstream and downstream statistics in here as well. You get the idea. I mean, the, the, all these things you can check out. Um, definitely... Online, there's actually, let me just give you a link here. There's a link to US 6 here. I'll put this link in the video description. It's going to have a whole bunch of information in here if you want to kind of learn a little bit more about TOS 6. But I'm just trying to show you kind of what this is all about as quick as I can here without getting too much into it. So the meat and the potatoes beyond this, though, is going to be, you know, what can you run on here? What apps can you run? That's the most important thing because this thing's like a mini server, like I mentioned, for your home. It's a, it's a network NAS device, right? You can attach it to, you know, multiple computers. You can remote in. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. So what about the software? side of it. Well, it has a whole different type. It's got an app center, basically. And you can get, you can download, they have certain software that they, they recommend, or it's been, I guess, tested and proven inside. So you can go ahead and download stuff like this. For instance, you can see TPC um, backup or centralized backup, cloud sync, deduplication manager, Docker engine, you can see. So I mean, all these things, Duple backup vault, there's a whole bunch of things in here you can do. Let me just keep moving. Um, there's photo apps and TerraSync. With the TerraSync app, you can turn the TNAS into a cloud drive server. I mean, all these different features in here. You can see web server, USB copy, VP, you can do a VPN server. So this is all kind of software that they actually recommend using. Um, web server, uh, Plex server down here, iSCSI manager, Docker manager. Again, Docker manager is a Docker management tool with the graphical interface to get a good user experience. So you get the idea. It has all the software built into it. And then beyond that, you know, with all the software, they keep adding it all the time. If, if you don't want to use their software, they do have another kind of off-site area you can go. It looks like this, and you can go ahead and download a whole bunch of other apps onto it as well, like I said. Now, the cool thing about this as well, so th that's the apps there, but... Th one thing I really liked about this too is it runs a security report for you and actually can help you with security. So if you're not that knowledgeable, you're afraid of using a NAS because maybe sometimes people can get in from the outside, it'll tell you what's lacking and give you links to the individual security elements you want to enable. So once you get into security in here, you can see that general, enable TOS automatic logout, timeouts, all this stuff's built in. It's pretty easy to do, um, like firewalls on. But when you get into like security isolation mode, it told me to check that. Security isolation mode is a specific security mode that blocks the 
the connection between the TNAS and the internet to prevent malicious attacks. You can do DOS attack, enable DOS protection. Um, I mean, it's got a whole bunch of things. Enable security and privacy control protection. It'll tell you what it recommends you to set up here and you can click these boxes to set it up and then you just reboot the system and it works fine. So security is really good in here as well. Now it takes, like I said, a little bit of fooling around with, but the beauty of this thing is, is you can go right onto their support and there's help things here, there's a help thing up here, as it say, support and help, and you can talk directly to them. They actually helped me, you know, through the whole process, and it was really kind of cool that they did that for me. So if you need to get help, it's very easy, and they've done a really good job with me so far, and they didn't know who I was, just full disclosure. Now, full disclosure as well, they gave me the device. Now, I want to say this is more of a product showcase. I don't do full reviews. I've only had it for two weeks. I have no idea. I have not put a lot of stuff on it yet. I'm just showcasing the product. They didn't tell me what to say in this video. They just sent me the unit. They have no obligations, and they're not paying me at all. So I just want to let you know that. With that said, though, so far everything's been, you know, working good and things, you know, some things were complicated to me, but I went out to a support and they were able to help me with it. So overall, if you're one of the people in between, you can definitely use their support and it works really well. Okay, and so really the reason also you pick one of these up, obviously, is for backup. So if you're a business or something like that, they have a whole bunch of backup software built into to here. So you can, like I said, you can cloud backup over to like Amazon and stuff like that. You can do three, two, one backups for, you know, so you're not going to get ransomware, stuff like that. It's also got a button up here at the top. It's called backup. You click up here and it's the backup topology diagram. So they're basically showing you what they can do. And then you click next and they give you, you know, a whole way to, you know, you can use a whole bunch of their backup stuff. Plus you can add a ton in here. I haven't added them yet. So you can add 20 other ones in here for all the different types of backups you need. So they kind of guide you through how to back up your system or back up your servers or back up, you know, your LUNs or back up your Dockers, all that kind of stuff. And it's all kind of built in. So it takes, again, it takes a little bit of a learning curve, but you can kind of fool around with it and figure it out fairly easy. And again, I'm not that familiar with all this stuff, but overall I had no problem doing it after I talked to them. So you guys just wanted to show you what's available. That's really all I wanted to cover with the software and kind of what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this up, but like I had mentioned before, if you're kind of more of a, a power uh, business user or a home user, this is perfect for you because it's like a mini little server here, and you know the difference is if you just want basic storage but a lot of it, the other device I showed you earlier, the um, hybrid device was really good as well, and that's more of a direct attached storage, so you get the idea here. I mean, this thing can do a whole bunch of different stuff, but you really need to get in there and kind of digging around. Now, this is not a full review like I mentioned. I just do a product showcase because I haven't had it long enough, and I haven't put all the software on but initially it's worked well for me. They've had really good support and they've helped me through the process. So if you think you're, you know, if you're familiar with these kind of things, you should have absolutely no problem. I just want to showcase it out there because obviously now you know it's available. Do your own research out there, get all the documentation and then make your decision. I'll have links to all of it in the description, including their website and all these other pages I'm talking about. But overall, you know, like I said, you just have to make sure it's right for you before you make the purchase. And obviously you got to install the drives in here as well. And that can add up in cost, but if you need it, you do need it. All right, we'll talk to you in the next video. I hope this helps you guys at least know that the product's out there, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.